All right, another antenna test type of day. What? Looks like somebody's already set up here to do antenna tests. Is this all my stuff? I only had to run home for a minute to reshoot that one thing. This is the biggest continuity error I've ever seen in my life. Oh no, I'm just shooting two videos in one day. Okay, perfect. How's it going everybody? I'm Josh, KI6NAZ, and I come to this park about a mile from my house to test radio gear. Why do I do that? Well, I have a receiving station at home that is listening for the signal to noise output of radios and antennas that I test from this location. And I found that if I take a bunch of antennas and I compare their S and R values on transmit, but also do a receiver test on the other side, we can show if an antenna is pretty good or not so good. Spoiler alert, stock antennas, which we call rubber duck antennas, are generally not very good. But today is a special day, very special day. In my magic bag, I have the thing that so many of you commented on on the last video. That's right, we are testing Baofangs. Let's get started. Ah yes, the humble Baofang. Most people's first ham radios, believe it or not, these days are these very inexpensive Baofangs. In fact, this is my first Baofang that I got in 2015. I was a ham well before that, but um, when these came out on the market, people started buying them up quickly and it's only gotten more popular from that point, which, which you all know about. In my last video, I compared sub $100 radios from companies like TYT, Yesu and Alinko. And I got a ton of comments on why didn't I include the Baofeng in the testing. Well, the good news is, is all the testing that I do here from this location um, is pretty much as accurate on any day that I do it. So the signal to noise ratio when I was last here against the TYT, the Alinkos, and the Yesu radio is going to be virtually the same if I did it today or tomorrow or the next day. Meaning that when we get done with today, we're still going to be able to rank all of them and have a top three best radios for signal to noise ratio. And a reminder on what signal to noise ratio is, it is the received transmit power expressed in just a different way. The higher the number is better objectively when looking at the transmitted signal from any one of these radios. We have the flip side too, where we want to see how good a radio is at receiving. These all have speakers, right? So what if I had just a simple audio tone that I could fire into this and we could just with our ears listen to it and determine, does that sound good? Does it sound bad? I appreciate this is YouTube. The audio is compressed. We're going into a microphone that I have set up here. So it's not gonna be the perfect situation, but it should be okay for our comparison today. All right, so the way I like to do these, I take a standard antenna and I'm gonna switch it between all the radios so I'm applying a level playing field against all radios. In true scientific experiment type format, I want the variables to be reduced as much as possible. The antenna being a variable that can vary in, in big ways, just stock antennas, third party antennas like this tribander here that's for my Yesu, whatnot. So I use the signal stuff signal stick. I do that for two reasons. One, because I really like it. It's good on two meters and 70 centimeters. It's relatively flat against those bands. I also like it because Signal Stuff Signal Stick helps pay for hamstudy.org, which also pay, pays for ham tools, which is used for online ham radio license testing. So if you'd like to support the company that provides the tools and the capabilities for getting people tested and growing our hobby, take the link in the description and check yourself out a Signal Stuff Signal Stick, a fantastic VHF UHF antenna, very flexy, as I've mentioned before, it's the one that's usually always on my radios, uh, particularly when I go outdoors. Yes, I am an affiliate of Signal Stuff Signal Stick. I appreciate what they do, and I thank you them for their support. First up, we have a bog standard Amazon UV5R. Lots of people ask me, Josh, what type of Baofeng should I buy? You should buy a UV5R off of Amazon, as cheap as you can get it. You just want one that's legit. Most of the time, Amazon, the Baofeng radios are legit. If for some reason you find out it's not legit, do this after you buy it quickly. Send it back to Amazon. That's the reason you buy these off of Amazon. So I've got a frequency here of my SDR at home that's listening via a disco and antenna. I like to give it the full 
high power. Let's make sure we are giving it the full high power. Kilo India 6 November Alpha Zulu testing a Amazon Baofeng UV5R on 2 meters. Okay, so that was VHF. Now we're going to test UHF. Kilo India 6 November Alpha Zulu testing the Amazon standard Baofeng UV5R high power on 70 centimeters. Now I hinted at the fact that I have a bit of a station at home where I can send a tone uh, via my control from this radio. And we use that to test the speaker output on this uh, radio. So let's do that now. Kilo India 6, November Alpha Zulu test. <laughs> All right, your simple bog standard UV5R. You know, uh, there's a ton of times way in the past where I've talked to people and recommended that they get a BFF8HP. We can call this the eight watt entry into this discussion. Generally, Baofangs are four watt radios on output. So this is twice the power, man. Well, how much better is this gonna be? Signal to noise ratio. And what does that turn into actually in like terms of audible tone? Every time you double the power of a ham radio, you get half an S unit. So if a station signal strength is what we call S9, which is generally on the very high side of a signal, like you're basically in the room talking to the person, does doubling the power from four to eight watts really change that much? I don't know, that's what we're gonna find out. My guess is probably not that much though. All right, high power on the BFF8 HP. Kilo India 6 November Alpha Zulu, we're testing the BFF8 HP on two meters. All right, very good. Flip side of that, let's go to 70 centimeters. Kilo India 6 November Alpha Zulu testing the Baofeng BFF8 HP on 70 centimeters at high power. All right, much like we did with the BOG standard Baofeng, let's do the audio test. So I'm gonna transmit a tone from my home. It's gonna be received by this Baofeng, and we're trying to listen for how good the speaker tone is. Kilo India 6 November Alpha Zulu test. That was about the clearest between the bog standard, but I'll tell you what, not much difference. Now I'm gonna switch to, uh, before we get to the last one, I'm gonna switch to my first Baofeng. I don't know how this is gonna work, if it's gonna work. This is the stock battery from 2015. Nothing's changed on it. Kilo India 6 November Alpha Zulu on Josh's first Baofeng on two meters at high power, high power. Kilo India 6 November Alpha Zulu testing Josh's first Baofeng on 70 centimeters. Now, let's hear that beautiful quality speaker. Kilo India 6 November Alpha Zulu test. Mm. Kind of muddy. I'm surprised it works as well as it does still. This was certainly a look. I, I'm glad we kind of went away from this look. <laughs> All right. So the, the last uh, Baofeng I'm going to test, this is touted as the, the best Baofeng or the best of the standard Baofengs, right? Like your $35, $30, $25 back in my day Baofeng. This is the Baofeng GT5R. This is arguably uh, the Baofeng that meets the SEC's requirements on spectral purity, meaning with a lot of these radios, when you transmit on them, they have a fundamental frequency, the frequency that's on the screen that you think it's transmitting on. But every RF device has harmonic. It's an appropriate multiple of frequency up on each side of the fundamental. So going up the frequency space and then down the frequency space. And it shows up as gradually decreasing signal strength, really a retransmit on those frequencies. Most of the Japanese, actually there's few that I don't know of that don't meet this. The FCC requires that um, radio sold in this country, in fact, most devices sold in this country that are powered could create um, spurious emission and harmful harmonics on the band. They require that they have the appropriate filtering built in that they don't spew that, the, the, that harmonic RF data or information all over adjacent frequencies. So when we test these, they're called spectrally pure. Now, the GT5R is supposed to be the spectrally pure Baofeng. It's the one that doesn't spray the spurious emissions all over outside even that of the ham radio frequency space, which is considered a good thing. It's preventing interference. 
So let's test this bad boy out. As a complete side note, this is generally the bow fang that I use when I bow fang. Uh, that's why it's got the extended battery with the AC port on the side. I'll post links to these so you can try and find them. I am an affiliate on Radiotity, which is uh, one of the places you can get these. I, it, it, it is actually spectrally much better than the others. So if you care about that kind of stuff, which arguably you should, we don't want to interfere with other people's frequencies. Could be first responder frequencies. Hypothetically, though, probably not likely. Regardless, let's do the test. Kilo India 6 November Alpha Zulu testing the Baofeng GT5R on two meters. High power, high power. All right, let's flip it over here. Kilo India 6 November Alpha Zulu testing the Baofeng GT5R 70 centimeters at high power. Time for that audio test. So we're gonna crank the volume on this boy. That's kind of weird. It was like it wasn't receiving as well. We're gonna do that one one more time. Faulty receiver, perhaps? What a stunning upset. Well, we got some kind of bullet point, but uh, maybe there's something going on with my radio back at home that's uh, that I'm using for testing. Okay, so we have some data. Let's take a look at that data right now. Editor Josh, take it away. All right, let's look at two meters first. So two meters, GT5R comes out on top, followed by the Amazon UV5R and then the BFF8HP. My first Baofeng, no surprise, is pulling behind, pretty far behind, uh, and it's worth showing. Keep in mind that there are dips in the SNR value, so I'm generally looking at the highest. Those low points could just be low points in the volume of my voice, the cadence, whatever. So we generally look most at the, the high points or the high dB numbers, what was actually the highest point. Uh, but I include all of them, at least I try to, for completeness and accuracy. Now flipping things around, the BFF8HP takes the lead for 70 centimeters, followed by the Amazon UV5R, then the GT5R. And they're pretty close as far as the dB values. My first Baofeng is way at the bottom. You'll generally note with HTs that 70 centimeters, at least in my testing, seems to show up with less power on my received station. So the signal to noise ratio is generally lower. It's just a harder band for me in my home environment. And I generally work two meters more than I work 70 centimeters from my home. Speaking of high SNR, if we just take the highest value of any of these radios and we look at two meter and 70 centimeter, we get a pretty clear picture. The GT5R actually is the highest high and the lowest low. It performs the best seemingly on two meters. The Amazon UV5R, similar kind of story, but interestingly enough, that BFF8HP seems to be a pretty good performer on both two meters and 70 centimeters. That could likely be the extra power for the BFF8HP helping out the 70 centimeter band. So keep that in mind if you're interested in a 70 centimeter decent performer, the BFF8HP may be the one you're looking at, but still to put things into perspective, we're talking about 0.2 SNR in comparison to the $22 Amazon UV5R. So probably not that important to worry about. So then how did the Baofengs shape up against the sub $100 budget radios? Let's take a look at two meters. Wow, I did not expect this myself. So the winner of the budget radio show showdown was the Alinko DJ VX50. And then the TYT UV88, the Yaesu FT4, and the TH350. It, looking at today's numbers, the Baofengs won. Now, there is a note here that possibly, maybe, we have a, a bit of an issue in my testing. Some of you may say, oh, this is this is rife with corruption. Well, the reality is, is that 6 dB is one S unit. So even the Alinko is not that far away from the GT5R. I did promise that I would take the winners of all of the throwdowns and do another head-to-head -head as we continue to go along. So I'll grab a couple from the winners of both sides of this, the GT5R, possibly the BFF8HP, the UV5R, and pit them against the Alinko DJVX50 and the TYT88, among some others. I haven't decided yet, but don't worry. Don't worry. We'll test them again, just so you know that there's no shenanigans going on. All right, so 
hopefully those numbers make some sense to you, particularly when we compare them against the sub $100 uh, radios that we talked about last week. You might also be sitting there thinking, Josh, you have a really nice super heterodyne uh, transceiver there in your hand. Why don't you test that and add it to the list too? You know what? You're right. Let's do that now. Kilo India 6 November Alpha Zulu transmitting on the Yesu VX6 at high power on 2 meters. Kilo India 6 November Alpha Zulu. Kilo India 6 November Alpha Zulu transmitting high power on 70 centimeters with the Yesu VX6. Okay, I'm going to try and do the audio tone transmit, but I, I think we might have lost my transmitter back home because I was running off battery power and not actually um, on external power, which I should have been. That's my fault. Regardless, let's give it a go. Okay, uh, what do I think that sounds like? It sounds a little bit like these, right? Yeah, probably in your ears, you probably thought that too. The reality though is that this is a fully submersible radio, so I give it a lot of leeway when it comes to this kind of stuff, and also its size. Boy, oh boy. I didn't plan on doing a, a comparison against the Yesu here, but um, I actually really like this radio. I like a lot of my radios. I think you all know that. And throwing the Yesu VX6R into the mix, you see it's down there with the Olinkos and the sub $100 winners. Yeah. Hey, at least it's consistent. Whether it's two meters or seventy centimeters, you get a solid output. Like you can see, it's almost uh, it's almost locked in at eleven point six. Boy, I don't know how to take some of these numbers, but hey, there they are. Okay, so that's the verdict. There's the data. You can't argue with data. It is what it is. Did this shake you to your very core? I hope it shook me to my very core when I was editing this all together. Now, what do you think of Baofangs? Maybe your opinions haven't changed, or maybe you'll think about maybe an upgrade from a Baofeng to maybe something a bit better, or step all the way up to a super heterodyne radio, which is going to have the best receiver capability when you compare it to direct conversion radios like these are. So I'm Josh, KI6NAZ. I hope you really enjoyed these. I do these practical tests at the park as a playlist. I'm linking you them to them now, so please go take a look at some of the other antennas and radios I've tested while I'm out here. Take it easy. See ya. Oh, I left the water bottle. Ay, ay, ay. See? This is the continuity error stuff. This is what gets you in trouble. Whoa, hey now. Hey now. Wow. That was an Adolf Hitler reference to start off a video. Wow. We'll go ahead and dive off of that one. How's it going, everybody? Hey, signal stuff. Signal stink.